Hey guys, Andrew Shrout. I'm here in the sideboard. I'm sitting with Ross Merriam. How's it going, Ross? Pretty good. You have shown up with an army of green creatures. Yep. Unfortunately, we uh, we couldn't bring an army of blue creatures to this tournament like I had for uh, most of this year, but I'm perfectly fine playing an army of green creatures as well. Sure. You have a little bit of a history with, with both flavors, yep. I guess. Uh, you've paired your green with black, actually. You're playing yep. uh, light black splash. A green black devotion. Tell me a little about why you chose to play this deck. So when I initially formulated a gauntlet to test for this event and to test for the new format in general, I thought that the three pillars of the format were going to be monocolored aggro decks, namely red and black, the uh, black-based mid-range decks, frequently black-green for sure. the powerful carry to Corsair engine, but they were going to mainly be removal heavy, like lots of one-for-ones, Thoughtseize downfalls, mm -hmm. maybe some planeswalkers, uh, sort of good stuff decks, and then the green ramp decks that are, will almost assuredly be devotion-based, uh, either mono green, uh, green splash red, or as I eventually landed on, splash black. And uh, in that initial gauntlet, the green devotion decks ended up testing the best. They're just sure. super powerful. And uh, I went about trying to like get an edge in certain matchups, and that's where the, the Black Splash came in. Okay, sure. So the, the Black Splash is kind of your, your flavor, but primarily you just wanted to play the good cards. Yeah, I just wanted to play the, it has the best mana. Like okay. it, you, don't, you don't have to worry about hitting your colors. You have a ton of basics. It doesn't deal you a lot of damage against the aggressive decks. You yeah. have plenty of uh, early plays, and you get to your mid game faster than the mid range decks. So against sure. the aggressive decks, you're, uh, you have that edge, which is nice. Okay, and then you have, of course, you, you mentioned the, the Sylvan Carry to Corsair Prefix package. Yep. Which is, I think, the, the reason you have the best mana. Sure, sure. It's not as central to this deck as to others. It's just sort of part of the mana package as opposed to the the mana package uh, as it is in the mid-range decks, but I mean, still very powerful, still a very important part to the deck. And the fact that Corsair is an enchantment uh, right. is super important as well. Important with your your, your Black Splash, because yes. you have all four Doomwake Giants. Yeah, Doomwake Giant, I think, is one of the best cards absolutely okay. uh, to be on this week, and it might end up being a pillar of the format. It's just really, really good. All right, it's a strong endorsement. So to go with, you have four Doomwake Giants, uh, four Corsair Prefix, which we've mentioned, yep. four Eidolon of Blossoms. Yeah, pretty standard uh, for a Constellation package. Like, okay. helps, uh, turns all your enchantments into cantrips. Like, sometimes the Corsair can be a bit low impact, especially sure. in the mirror. So just being able to dig to your deck and find your high end is really nice and make land drops. Okay, yeah, and we, uh, the one Nylea God of the Hunt we talked about yep. is the the 13th enchantment in the main, and then one Farika on the board, yep. just 14 total. So not going like completely crazy with the Yeah, it's not really There's... a constellation deck per se. It's a devotion deck with a constellation sub -team. Okay. All right. And then the, we talked about these cards that you have four of, because there are a lot of four ofs in this deck. Yep. But one card that I noticed that kind of stood out to me as a one of, uh, you have one Nissa World Waker. And, and this is a card that I think a lot of people kind of assume that it's it's the reason to play green. Yeah, it's so, a, it was a super powerful card. Uh, and uh, has been a fixture of the Green Devotion decks in the previous format. But what I found uh, from having it in my main deck in the initial list of Green Devotion, which I had, which were red splash lists, okay. uh, was that it wasn't particularly good in the mirror. Although if you got to untap with it, it uh, like the plus one and get it netting a lot of extra mana uh, off of untapping forests was really good. But the four fours could get pretty easily uh, trumped in the mirror and it was too slow against aggressive decks. Like on turn five, you would cast it, and then you wouldn't be able to make a 4-4 blocker. At best, you'd like untap a couple lands and maybe play another mana creature and block with that. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't too effective against the aggressive decks either. Where it was effective was against the black mid-range decks, because okay. when they downfall, you still have a 4-4 left over, right. and if it stays in play for more than the one turn, it can really take over the game. Okay. So I, uh, I did a movement of the board when I went to the Black Splash version, because Doom Wake takes up a lot of slope, uh, spots on the curve at five. Right. Okay. And I ended up moving one back into the main deck, because that used to be a main deck for Rika, and I figured even though I would be cutting an enchantment to get a Nissa in the main, it was a more powerful card, and I think overall it's better against the black mid-range decks, which is what that slot was trying to sure. fight. Yeah, okay. So that, that's how I ended up with one Nissa in the main deck, and I have two more on the sideboard, All right. uh, because it's just the best card against those black decks. Just kind of moved them around, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're still there, but I, I don't think it's a central part to the deck at all. Okay. All right. Uh, I want to talk about the top end of this deck a little bit. You have all four Genesis Hydra. Uh, yep. That's a powerful spell. Yeah, I uh, I started with two actually in my initial list, and it just kept working its way up. Everybody I talked to told me I was an idiot for not playing four the entire time. And they were right. <laughs> okay. It, it's just it's the best card that you can top deck in the mid to late game, and you just have a ton of mana. It's just far and away the best one. Sure. And 
it can even find some of your other like really good ones, like Hornet Queen or yeah. Nylea or something. Yeah. So if you have a ton of mana, it ends up acting like a Court of Calling right. that also just has a 1010 or some absurdly sized body attached. Okay. When you find Nylea and it tramples, that body is really good. You mentioned acting like a Court of Calling. You actually don't have any Court of Callings in this deck. Yeah, Court of Calling, I've never liked in these Green Devotion decks, even last season. You, you don't, uh, even last season, you at least had Burning Tramissary right. as sort of a, was, was a pseudo mana creature in that deck that could then net extra mana by tapping to convoke for cord. Mm -hmm. All your creatures here are either mana creatures, so they tap for mana right. anyway, or are big creatures that you don't really want to tap for cord okay. calling. And like spending eight mana for your big guy is, is pretty rough, and it just does nothing in the early game. There are times where um, Genesis Hydra, you can cast it for four or five mana, and it's not great. You really want to be casting it for six plus. Right. But you can cast it for four or five against an aggro deck and either find a Corsair or a mana creature and really de and develop your board a little bit that way. And I mean, when you know the top of your deck, if you have a Corsair in play, okay. sometimes you can mitigate that risk. And you're just like, oh, I see, All right. I see a, a carry to bear, and you, and you can accelerate your board that way. I actually, uh, in round one today, against a red deck, I was in a kind of a tight spot in one game and just had to cast it for one. Uh, just to trade with something, and I hit Elvish Mystic off the top. Because sure. Okay. I'm a very powerful yeah. wizard. Must, must be. <laughs> Is. It's, it's a skill game. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, very skillful. I, I want to talk about the sideboard a little bit. Uh, a card that you have been kind of singing the praises of. Uh, four Nylea's Disciple. Yeah, every single list that I've built in this deck has had four Nylea's Disciple in the sideboard. It's just the best card against aggressive decks you sure. can find. You're really good at clogging the board to block all the creatures out of the aggressive decks, but especially against red, it's super important to gain some life and get out of uh, their burn range. And even the black aggro deck has Mogus's Marauder right. as essentially a reach spell. It'll just deal you 6-8 damage sure. uh, unless you have Doomic Giant in play. And, uh, and so getting out of range of those reach spells is, is just the most important thing you can do. You can even find extra copies with Genesis Hydra and gain an absurd amount right. of life that way. I gained 19 life last round against a red deck with two of them and, <laughs> and just attacked for three a couple times. It's it definitely been doing a, yeah, a ton of work. It is, it's actually the only card in the sideboard that I think is 100% correct. All right, Nissa, fair. I'm like 95% sure. sure. Reclamation okay. Sage, 95% sure. The rest are, are a little sketchier. Sure. Yeah, but Annalia's Disciple, of course, the, the decks that actually care about your life total, a 3-3 three, three is a monster against those decks to yeah, begin with. Yeah, it's so. all their cards are 2-1s. There's Mono Savannah Lions, 3-3, no, three, three, block. So, so four of that card, you'd probably play like seven if you could. Uh, uh, six, probably. Six? Yeah. All right, you, you've thought about it. <laughs> uh, all right, so we, let's get into some of these sketchier ones then. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you, you mentioned that Reclamation Sage you were pretty solid on. Uh, one that stands out to me, uh, particularly because you don't have that many black sources, you have two heroes downfall. Yeah, downfall uh, is sketchy on the mana. Uh, it's important to note that frequently Voyaging Sager can make black mana by untapping one of your sure. black lands. So okay. you do have a potential eight creatures that can make black. Okay. So if you draw one of your eight black lands, you should be uh, pretty well set to cast the downfall. I just really, I didn't have a lot of slots left and I needed a card that killed uh, things in the mirror, which mainly means big creatures, Polychronos, Genesis Hydra, things like that. And I, uh, I was struggling against some of the Planeswalkers out of the black midrange lists, uh, especially Bug with Ashiok and Kiora. Okay. So I wanted a card that killed both Ashiok and Polychronos, and this is just the only one. Fair so uh, All right. I, I thought about playing one Garrick Apex Predator over one of the downfalls. Sure, that kills Only them. one black, and you have time to find it. but. Uh, I actually don't want a seven, another 7-drop in the mirror, because okay. I think the, the mirror is pretty fast and you want to get on board quickly, All right. so clogging your hand with 7-drops is really bad. Okay. But I think if you really wanted to beat the black midrange decks, one Garrick would be better than one of the downfalls. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just uh, the one sort of stretch to my mana I made. It's two downfalls in my sideboard. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it, it, the mana base I feel like is pretty conservative otherwise, but yep. yeah, the reasoning is solid. Yeah. Uh, normally I would ask here what you're hoping to play against when you're playing this deck. I feel like I know the answer already. Yeah, you're, uh, you're wanting the, to Doomwake Giant people. Yeah, so. anything where Doomwake Giant is good. I, I think the I think the aggressive decks are good matchups. Mm -hmm. uh, although game one can be uh, a little scary, but once you bring in Disciples and Satessan Tactics or Rex Sage against the black decks, because they have a ton of enchantment creatures, mm -hmm. then I think you're he a heavy favorite. I like my matchup in the mirror, although I don't think there's too much of an edge to be gained in the mirror. Sure. It's just really about who uh, comes out quickly, so I, you have to aggressively mulligan. But Doom Make Giant is actually a, a pretty big trump, especially in multiples. Right. You're going to have to go into four just because they were so effective in multiples. Okay. Yeah, you, you can just set up turns where you can't trip with an Eidolon, trigger it twice, play another enchantment, and their entire board's gone. Right. J just playing the second one triggers it twice. Yeah, exactly. So. And yeah, and, or something like that. And so, and it kills Hornet Queen, which was uh, early on under casting Hornet Queen was the big trump for the 
for yeah. the mid-range decks. The reanimator decks were all trying to put that card into play. Okay. The ramp decks were all ending at Hornet Queen. So having a card that actually really neutralizes Hornet Queen and Elspeth uh, is really good. So any any of the ramp decks, I think you're a slight favorite. The mid-range decks is where it gets a little sketchier. Okay. Uh, that was my next question. Like, what are what are we afraid of with this Yeah, the, the mid-range decks, I think, are close, uh, depending on their build. I've been really happy playing against the junk versions. Okay. Obviously, they have fewer planeswalkers, but the bug versions with uh, Ashiok and Kiora, as I mentioned, can be a little bit tougher. Uh, you really just have to like, keep the pressure on and, and get a lot of threats down, but if you miss any point in the curve, they can get a planeswalker down and really start running away with the game. Okay. Uh, like, Eidolon gives you a decent... Uh, card advantage engine, so that's nice, but you do miss the Planeswalkers that the Red Splash version had, sure. Senegos and Mandag Nissa. Who do have Nissa's out of the board? All right. So you're 3-0 so far. Yep. Uh, mostly been picking on aggro decks so yeah, far. Yeah, uh, two red like. aggro decks and one Mardu Tokens deck. So if you can imagine Doomake Giant being <laughs> just utterly absurd. All right. Well, hopefully the X1s keep presenting themselves. Yeah, yeah. All, Thank- all X1s all the time. Thanks for sitting down with me, Ross. Thanks, Seth. Stick around. We've got plenty more coverage coming of the Standard Open here in New Jersey.